Hi, whoever wants and wildcard knows that rust and decaying body parts are something they have to deal with periodically. For example, in my car the left front fender has started to decay the most out of all the problem areas. If a couple of years ago there was a small problematic area, now the fender hardly resembles what was originally made in the factory. Since buying a new fender and getting it painted by garage professionals would cost a significant amount of money, I decided, as always, to save money and buy a cheap fender from a car scrapyard and try to paint it myself. I managed to find the fender for a relatively small amount of money, but unfortunately it had rust. There was only a little visible rust upon external inspection, but when I started sanding the surface, I realized that I would have to put some effort into it. Since I had no prior experience in painting, I had to get the knowledge from the internet and watch numerous YouTube videos to get an idea of what needed to be done and in what sequence. I divide the entire process into stages and started with washing the fender to remove dirt, oil stains and make it easier to work with the part. I washed the part, dried it and removed it, all attached elements to clean and paint those areas as well. Next, I carefully examined the problematic areas of the fender, which were naturally the edges and the bottom row the fender attached to the pillar and seal. Then, I took 80 grit sandpaper and gradually removed the old paint, clear coat, parry and rust. There was only a little rust on the front side and I was able to quickly remove it with an orbital sander. However, the inside of the fender was harder to work on, so I had to use more manual methods there. I also made sure to remove rust from the lower parts of the component as much as possible. Preparation is the foundation of the entire work, so it was important to minimize the presence of rust. I made a small sandblasting device with the flexible hose to reach the backside of the edge. I managed to remove most of the rust particles, but manual methods were still more effective in some cases. To take off the remaining rust, I decided to use a rust converter. I bought a product that didn't require rinsing after application and thoroughly treated all the problem areas. I let the rust converter work and dry for a whole day. Then I took 180 grit sandpaper and sanded the fender to further improve the areas with rust and also to sand off the old paint and clear coat. However, I made a mistake here by assuming that the primer would cover everything, but I should have sanded more to avoid contouring with the old clear coat. I then used the rust converter again to treat and remain rust. Once the converter had dried, I sanded the part with 240 grit sandpaper, cleaned it and applied epoxy primer to both sides. For the epoxy primer I used a two-component product. I applied the first coat with the light spray and once the surface was completely dry, I coated and fender with primer for both sides. After applying the primer, I realized that I should have sanded the old clear coat better because some contouring was still noticeable once the primer dried. Before starting to parry, I made a notch with red scotch bright, and in those places where the contouring turned it out, I again polished the surface with 180 and 240 sandpaper. Next, I used fiberglass parry to fill a hole in the fender and build up a missing edge. Once the parry dried, I sanded all the excess using a sanding block with 120 and 180 grit sandpaper. In some places the primer was rubbed, but this is not a big deal, since then there will be another layer of epoxy primer. Then I applied the finishing parry to make the surface smoother. After it dried, I sanded all the excess parry with 240 grit sandpaper. 
I applied another coat of epoxy primer on the areas where parry was applied and where the metal was exposed. After applying the primer, the visible outlines were almost gone. Due to my lack of experience, I decided to proceed to the next steps, but achieving a perfectly smooth surface was necessary. Before the primer, I necessarily passed the fender with red scotch bright, then blew off the dust and degreased the surface. I mixed black primer with the hardener and applied the first coat with the light spray. After 10 minutes, I applied a second coat of primer. Once the surface became matte, I applied another layer of primer. After waiting for the front side to dry, I repeated the same process on the back side of the fender. After the primer dried, I sanded the part with 500 grit sandpaper, then removed the dust and degraced the surface. One mistake to note is the lack of primer on the edges of the fender. Before applying the paint, I cleaned the surface from dust particles using a tacked cloth. Then I applied the first coat of paint with a light spray. After 10 minutes, I applied the second coat of paint. Once it became made, I applied another layer of paint. Another mistake was the slight outline of the old clear coat and paint, indicating the need for better surface preparation. Next, I dilute the varnish and make the first layer with a small spray. After 10 minutes, I applied a generous coat of clear coat. After 24 hours, the base coat and clear coat were dry, allowing me to install the fender on the car and evaluate the color match. The new fender has been installed, but I can see that I still need to do some polishing to make the clear coat resemble a mirror and eliminate any imperfections. Overall, I am satisfied with the result and hope to achieve and in better outcome next time. See you soon in new videos.